So I bought a package from TCG Player Direct, and if I'm being honest, guys, I don't really trust TCG Player Direct. There's a lot of reasons why. First and foremost, the amount of shipping you have to pay for or the amount of product you have to buy to get free shipping is insane when you consider how TCG Player treats their like actual sellers, like the people who don't use the Direct program. We get paid $1.27 for an order and our free shipping threshold is at $5. TCG Player Direct, on the other hand, says $3.99 per order and you don't get free shipping until $50. But they will promote their direct stuff well before they promote their regular sellers. And if you're a seller who decides not to opt in the free shipping, like you're charging $1.27, no matter what, then your order is like the last to be seen on the platform. Like it goes direct orders first, and then it'll go to the sellers who offer free shipping at $5. And then uh, you end up with this TCG player direct. And I don't like that. I don't like that as a seller on the platform. I feel like it's unfair to the sellers who don't do the volume to participate in the direct program. But I did order a pretty large order. And I got to say, first and foremost, without any other observations, I don't like the fact that I ordered a $50 order and I got cards shoved into a giant envelope like this that are not top loader. Look, I'm not asking for a top loader for every single card. But anytime I get an order above $20, here's what I do. If it's a mass amount of cards, I take these, right? I take a team bag top loader shove it in the team bag right obviously this team bag's been folded so it's a little bit harder to shove this team bag in there especially with the sticky but you do that you put a top loader in here for a backing and then you put your cards in right bam right i know that the cards keep sticking to the plastic but you know how much more i feel safe with my order when this happens when you got something that's a little bit more rigid a little bit more sturdy than just a stack of cards you ain't gonna ship one booster pack and a uh, in a an oversized bubble mailer right and it required me to spend 50 dollars to even get free shipping other than that i'm paying 3.99 for shipping so this little five cent ten cent top loader tcg player couldn't throw in the team bag with these cards like that's why I don't like TCG Player Direct. They do shit like this. But I wanted to buy some cards for my Pokedex binder. And I ended up getting a few bangers. A lot of these cards were available on TCG Player Direct. Another thing, if you guys don't know about TCG Player Direct, is that most of the stuff that you'll find on TCG Player Direct is overpriced. There was a lot of cards where the only copies available on TCG Player Direct were 4 or $5 above market. And I wasn't paying that considering I'd have to pay $50 just to get the shipment. So I got all the cards that pretty much match the market. Some of these are amazing artworks like this Metapod right here and this Spiro. I love the warm colors used in the Spiro. Giovanni's Nidoran, Koga's Kakuna, the Radicate, beautiful card. And it was just a bunch of random cards. Blastoise from Celebrations, Alola Ninetales. Beautiful. Raichu and Alolan Raichu. And essentially what's going to happen is all these cards are going to be put into my Pokedex binder. Obviously there's some Pokemon like Venusaur where there are higher rarities that I would want in the Pokedex binder. And the way my Pokedex binder works is I have two copies of each Pokemon in there and then two copies of any variants like Alolan Raichu for example. And essentially like for here, I would have two Venusaur cards and right now it'll be these two Venusaurs. But whenever I get one of the higher rarity Venusaurs that I prefer the artwork for, I'll replace one of these Venusaurs. This is my favorite Butterfree card. I love the Crosshatch Reverse, beautiful card. This is a League promo, but it's beautiful. Look at that. And then an Alolan Sandshrew. So it's just kind of like filling up. I believe the last Pokemon in here is Wigglytuff. I want to say in terms of numbers, maybe it's Ninetales. I'm not entirely sure, but look at that Wigglytuff, by the way. That foiling is so nice. A lot of random cards, uh, really beautiful. 
Uh, none of these cards really stick out as like damage. I haven't looked at any of them up close, but all of them look pretty good in my opinion. So I'm not going to complain too much about the damage. Some of them were marked like played like this Alolan uh, Sanshrew. Although, looking at it, I would definitely consider that mod play. I don't know if you guys can see the amount of scratching on this card is insane. Plus all that edge damage and stuff on the back. So there's already one that I'm just looking at that doesn't match the condition I bought it at. I didn't buy any mod played cards. It was light played or higher. And there was definitely at least one in here that is definitely below light played. Like that is, I think anybody can agree that's in the hobby that that is 100% mod played with the amount of scratching and surface damage on both sides. Like crazy. But for the most part, these are all just going to be sleeved up. These are all going to be put in the Dex Binder. And maybe one day on stream, I will show you the Dex Binder. But the reason why I wanted to record this video is when I felt these cards in the package, I could just felt they weren't protected in any way. And once again, to show you guys, this is the size of Bubble Mailer it was in. It wasn't folded and taped to keep them from shifting around. These cards were sloshing all around. And considering... I wouldn't be surprised considering that this was the back card in the stack if this card got some of that edge damage from the mailer. I know that the bubble mailer has got a padding inside of it, but this is thin padding. The card can easily slosh around throughout UPS's, uh, USPS's system and easily splash around. So guys, be careful when buying from TCG Player Direct. They don't properly protect your cards like some top end sellers would do on TCG player platform. And I would definitely recommend buying from an actual seller. Don't go for the first offered price because it's usually direct because TCG player wants to promote those. Go with somebody who can actually give you your cards in a timely manner, won't charge you over market, and will actually put your cards in a proper size mailer with maybe at least a top loader backing and protecting them, right? This. This is kind of irritating. I'm definitely going to leave some negative feedback for TCG Player Direct on this one because uh, some of these cards are definitely not in the conditions as promised. Um, and I didn't get these cards in a well-protected manner for spending $57 for all this. This was $57 in cards. And I feel like I definitely didn't get my values worth in terms of price and the quality of service. So this is why I don't like TCG Player Direct. And that's pretty much the point of the video. So guys, with that being said, let me know down in the comment section below. Have you used TCG Player Direct? Um, what do you think about it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Um, every time I've, had, I've used TCG, uh, TCG Player Direct, it has been a negative experience for me. And this is just another one in the books. It definitely kind of disappointing to see cards that are a little bit beyond damage. A lot of cards in here got edge damage. So I'm curious if I've, all of these are light played or some of them are supposed to be near mint. But... With that being said, guys, I will catch you on the next video. Keep it awesome.